The fabric of a church is the most exalted building that may be erected by man. It is presumably built not for a day, but for generations. It must not only fulfill the exact requirements of the parish for which it is erected, but it must show forth in every line the essential nature of the vast spiritual power it is to manifest in visible form. So wrote architect Ralph Adams Cram in his firm's original plans for the fourth St. Thomas Church. The structure of the architecture and style of a church can have quite an effect on the tone of the worshiping assembly. We can't be utterly reliant on the style of the architecture. It's what happens in the liturgy that really constitutes the spiritual experience. But architecture is a tremendous enhancer, expresser of that. Architecture expresses and impresses. And I think there is something permanent and abiding about what is called Gothic architecture. I find I love the classic structure, this beautiful Gothic building. There's always something you can look at at the Reredos, the carvings. It's, it's very grand, and yet it's very comforting and welcoming as well. At 43 feet wide and 80 feet high, the Reredos, or altar screen, of St. Thomas is one of the largest in the world. It contains more than 80 figures designed by sculptor Lee Laurie, among them exceptional representations of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Christ the King, and St. Thomas. The centerpiece, the cross surrounded by kneeling angels, was copied from the much smaller St. Gordon's Reredos that was destroyed by the fire of 1905. First among the many remarkable qualities of the design of St. Thomas Church is its detail. Every turn is evidence of the incredible outpouring of creative energy and imagination of its creators. There's a kind of solidity and integrity of thought in this building, in the way it's planned, in the overall massing that are irresistible. They're so appealing and so solid. And then by contrast, there's just the exercise of a brilliant imagination on the part of Goodhue in finishing out the details and turning it into what we see when we're here. Upon careful inspection, it is difficult not to notice that for such an elaborate building, St. Thomas is actually quite austere, particularly down towards the floor and back near the entrance. When you come into the building from Fifth Avenue, you notice as you stand there and take it in, there are basically two kinds of progressions that are being dramatized for you. So it starts absolutely plain on the floor and then graduates into splendor as it goes up. And even as it does that in the vertical axis, it also does it in the horizontal axis, so that when you come in and stand at the back of the nave, you're in a relatively simple room, but then as you move forward and catch a view of the Reredos, and then come up these steps into the chancel and stand in between the carved wooden choir stalls, there's a similar progression from simplicity to richness or from earthliness to heavenliness, if you choose. When it came to the exterior, Cram and Goodhue had the foresight to realize that much taller structures would be built in the vicinity of the church in coming decades. Dr. Cram wrote, a lofty spire, or towers that for their full effect must loom high over all other structural surroundings, were out of the question. The single tower rises but little above the ridge of the roof, and the effect will come through commanding scale and beautiful detail. Architectural critics said of this building in 1911 that it was the finest parish church in America. It is, I think, the 
best and most important and most completely realized Gothic revival building in North America. The combination of the richness of the details and the real eccentricity and boldness of the basic plan, when you put those together and then relentlessly execute them in the way this building has been executed, you get a masterpiece. And I think it's fair to say that's what this building is.